Shane with the EOTech GNA and today we are going to do a comparison and review. What we got here is we got the Keltec Sub 2000 Gen 1 and 40 Smith and Wesson. We got the Keltec Sub 2000 Gen 2 and 9 millimeter. And just as a comparison, we got the High Point 995 Tactical in 9 millimeter. Now. I just kind of brought this one out just to do a little comparison on uh, carbine or pistol caliber carbines. Sorry, I had a long night. But what we got here is uh, we'll start out with uh, these two. Move that over. Now I'll start from the back up. On uh, the Gen 1, the way it locks and folds and you unfold it is there's a little tab right here and you push it in or over. And on this one, it's actually got a whole uh, little bracket here. I actually prefer the old one over the new one, but that happens. On the Gen 2, unlike the Gen 1, there's an adjustable stock. Um, really bad at it but I'm assuming you push this pin out right here but I don't think I have the time or patience to show that right now they're practically built the exact same but the polymer they used and the design I guess is a little different both of them they both charge with this little handle right here that's one I just bought this so it's pretty stiff Cock those back, loads around in the chamber. Now, first off, I just want to say, compared to the Gen 1, the Gen 2 feels a hell of a lot better. The plastic, or polymers, is, feels like it's higher quality. It um, seems like the seams are put together a lot better, too. On this one right here, if you hold the handle, right where the seams come in right here, kind of feels like it comes apart a bit. But, so far, by looking at these guns, they're practically the same. This one, the Gen 2, unlike the Gen 1, they put... Uh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I don't really have much space to do this, so I'm just going to put a blanket on the floor. This one has kind of like AR-15 style uh, sights on it. It's got an open sight on the back. They both have that, but the front sight's... A little better than the first. A little harder to see, but it's a hell of a lot better. On this one, you can see the same. It has uh, open back sights, and the front sight on this one has a little orange dot. It's kind of hard to see when you're shooting, but I like it. A lot of people hate it, but I like it. On the Gen 2, you have some Picatinnies that are built into the forend here. Kind of looks like it has a free floating barrel on it, but the only thing I don't like about this is there's a model you can buy, I think it's called the Red Line or something like that. And what it does is you put it on a Gen 1 and it has Picatinny's on it, and I think it's made of metal. And what you can do is so you can actually put a scope on it or a sight or something. They actually made it so there's a little locking nut right here and you twist it open, and this will twist sideways so you can still fold it. But, the trigger feels a hell of a lot better on the 2, too. I mean, the 1, it kind of feels like it has a little bit of a pullback on it. But Now, the Gen 2, unlike the Gen 1, has a threaded barrel. You can see that. And the Gen 1 does not... Uh, I mean, really, there is, besides the polymer they used and the new uh, buttstock on it, there really is not too much of a difference. I mean, just by holding them, I would prefer the Gen 2 over the 1. Um, I'm not too big of a fan of 9mm, but I know these are harder to find in the 40, so I just picked this up when I saw it. 
This one is in 40. I prefer the caliber. It has a little more of a punch than a 9mm and goes a little bit faster than a 45. But, I keep saying but. Um, I mean really, that's about it. There's not too much of a difference besides just the stock itself and the sights. But, I'm gonna show you the 995T. This is a high point. It's pretty cheap gun. I mean, I picked, I paid too much. I think I paid around three for this. You can probably pick these up used about 150, 200. And on mine, I couldn't get the locking or the bolt handle to put it on, so this thing just twists out. Uh, I mean, this is kind of like if you put a Gen One and a Gen Two together, but made them as cheap as possible. It's pretty much got the exact same sights as the Gen 1, except it doesn't have, like, that little orange tab on the middle. It's a little heavier than both of them. Uh, the butt pad on it, I mean, it's supposed to absorb recoil, but at 9mm, I don't think you really need that. It's got a cheek, cheek rest, I mean, it really doesn't do anything, it's pretty much they just tried making it look like they gave you a little extra option there. Sorry about the lighting, too. It's like morning. Uh, yeah, it's got Picatinny's. You can take this top sight off right here and put a red dot on if you want. It's got, uh, on the forend here, I hate it. I wish I would just go out and buy a grip for it already. But this right here, even though it's 9mm, I feel like it tears the hell out of your hands whenever you shoot it. It's got a little, you can put a laser flashlight or something on there if you wanted uh... that's really about it guys i mean this is a really bad review <laughs> but that's what you get whenever you stay up till three in the morning and wake up early and real quick i'll give you a little price comparison the gen one picked it up for about four gen two picked it up around for five and the High Point 995T, you can get them anywhere from 150 to 300, I guess. This is pretty much the cheapest model. Don't expect too damn much out of it, and it's hard as hell to take apart and clean. These these two right here, they're a little harder to find than the High Point. I mean, Keltec, they only made so many of the first ones, and the only way you're going to get this is if you go to, like, Arms List or something. If you guys don't know what that is, it's kind of like Craigslist, but for guns. That's where I picked this one up at. That one, I got lucky and found it at a store. And these, you can pretty much just find anywhere. Um, yeah. That's about it, guys. Thanks for watching.